What do you need to start a food truck in Texas? And how much does it cost to start a food truck in Texas? Welcome to Food Truck Freaks. We are YouTube's food truck entrepreneur channel. This is a brand new channel dedicated to the food truck industry and helping you get your food truck up and running. Or if you've got a food truck, we're going to help you expand your sales and develop more outlets for you to make more money. That's right. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell notifications for all our brand new videos. And we're going to get to that right now. All right, so welcome back to Food Truck Freaks. It's Damian Roberti, founder and CEO of Marketing Food Online and Food Truck Freaks. We have a handful of food entrepreneur channels here on YouTube, so you definitely want to check out the links down below the video and see our other channels. If you have anyone in your family looking to create food businesses or friends that you know, let them know about our channels. We appreciate the support. But let's dive right into specifically, how do you get a food truck up and running in Texas and what exactly do you need to do that? So we're gonna go over a handful of permits and licenses and give you some rough ideas as far as the estimations for the financial responsibilities as well. So right off the bat, you need to make sure right off the bat, you need to have your food truck, of course. Now, as how much does a food truck cost, Damien? Well, to be honest with you, that is a very difficult question to answer because there's so many variables. You might find a great used truck at a great price, but you may need to retrofit it. You may need to specifically set up the interior, the inside, getting certain equipment based upon your menu Whatever you're making and whatever you decide to make as far as food is really going to dictate the type of equipment you'll need. So to give you an estimate on the low end, a food truck could run anywhere from $25,000, $30,000 or $40,000 for a very small unit that could be potentially used and may need some retrofitting and some reconstruction. But if you go on the high end, if you're getting it custom made, I've heard that it goes around $100,000 to $125,000 on the high end. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to spend that much. A lot of times it's going to be dependent upon the size of the truck, the equipment you need, um, and any other additional um, pieces of equipment that you might have to put on specifically for the type of food you're making. So look anywhere from about thirty to 40000 on the low end and maybe up to about one hundred to 125000 for the truck on the high end. Next up, getting a truck started in Texas, a food truck up and running, you're going to need insurance. Now insurance per year roughly runs between two to about $3,500. $2,000 to 3500 a year. Then you're going to need some inventory. Obviously, when you get the food truck up and running for your first run, you're going to have to have food costs and inventory. That can run anywhere from about 1200 to potentially 2500 That also, too, is going to be very difficult to estimate because your menu will dictate the type of products that you'll need, the type of ingredients that you need. So if you're doing really high-end sushi, let's say, and you're getting salmon and tuna, these types of things, obviously that's going to be a lot more expensive and it would be if you're doing pizzas or tacos or hot dogs or hamburgers. So look for about that, that price range for your initial food cost. Next up, paper products. So things like napkins, small wares, your plastic throwaways, disposable food cups. These are things, lids, those types of things. You're looking at about $350 to about $500 to get started. Now, I also recommend a lot of food trucks don't have them, believe it or not, which is kind of surprising, but you need to have a website. And if you're going to have someone make you a website, it can be anywhere from about $1,200 on the high end to about $2,000, $3,000 on the high end for a website to be made. Now, I personally actually have developed and made all of my own websites using Weebly, Shopify, and GoDaddy. So I would recommend you take the time and do it yourself. A lot of these do-it-yourself website building platforms are very simple to use. And if you can start a food truck business, I totally believe that you can actually create your own website. That will save you a fortune. Now, Let's dive into a little bit of the legalities, like the permits and licenses. So what kind of things do you need in Texas to open a food truck? Well, number one, employer identification number. That's the EIN. This is actually kind of like a social security number in a sense for your business, and it's issued to you by the IRS. It's absolutely free, but you do need to get onto their website, apply for that employer identification number, and that is gonna be used for tax purposes and to also distinguish your business specifically from the IRS so they know who you are and know your food truck in Texas. Next up, business license. Of course, you're gonna to need to have a business license. Operate even a mobile food business, you gotta make sure you've got a business license. Your city or county specifically will um, issue that for you. Now, the cost of that runs anywhere from about 75 to maybe $150. Business licenses are also an annual license. So you need to make sure that you stay on top of those dates, guys, because I, I operate several food businesses and, and even e-commerce businesses. And uh, the first couple of years I did it, uh, I actually had forgot about it and it was not a pleasant thing. I actually got fined. So you want to make sure that you stay on top of the refiling of your business license. 
All right, so next up, you gotta have a vehicle license, okay? So make sure that you obviously have a valid driver's vehicle license. Now the driver's license is something that you're thinking, well, Damien, that's kind of common sense. Uh, that's a no brainer. Well, you gotta think about it this way. And I do this in a lot of our videos. You gotta be sure that the people who are working for you and working with you, your employees are very critical to the success of your food truck. If they do not have a valid license and by chance they are driving your vehicle, your food truck in Texas, they get stopped and pulled over in an accident and don't have a valid license, guess what? That food truck license could be potentially revoked, could be suspended, you can get your truck impounded. It could cause a lot of legal problems. So guys, whatever you do, when you start hiring people or having, even if it's your friend, your cousin, your relative, whatever, make sure that they're gonna drive your vehicle, they need to do it legally. And that is with a valid driver's license, okay? Next up, seller's permit. So you gotta get yourself a seller's permit too, by the way, guys. This is really crucial because you don't wanna be paying taxes on your ingredients and then collecting taxes twice. You don't wanna be paying taxes if you go to a local uh, commercial restaurant supply store, if you're buying produce, proteins, you know, vegetables and meats and things of that sort. All of those ingredients need to be bought without paying sales tax. So keep that in mind. If you're getting things wholesale, Make sure the wholesaler knows that you have a seller's permit because you're going to collect the taxes when you pre create the product and give it to the customer. That's when you collect the sales tax. And that is when, of course, if your county or city requires you to do this, of course, some places don't even collect sales tax on food product per se, but you want to make sure that you get that remitted to the state. Next up, food safety or food handler's permit as it's known. So you definitely need to fill out and get a food handler's permit. It's actually a course. Now, I believe the course is actually taken online, but the testing, I think, is in person. Uh, most states will have you required to do that as well to make sure that you go through the process of understanding how to cook food, present it, store it, reheat it, and everything else in between. You don't want to make sure that you want to make sure that you don't get somebody sick. Sorry about that. And you go through that process and understand food safety and food handling. Um, and I believe in some states, uh, counties and cities, they actually require all of your employees to take them, not only the person owning the food truck. Next up, health department permit. So they, yes, the health department will do an inspection and normally you cannot uh, get the thumbs up to actually conduct business without a approved health department inspection permit. You will need to get that. On average, those are around, I think 120 for food trucks are about 125 to about 200 bucks, I think on a high end. Um, and the health department permit is normally one that's also an annual one. That, that's also gonna be dependent upon the city and county. But the health department permit is one that you'll have to renew each year, and you may also actually get an annual uh, inspection. Sometimes they do it quarterly, every three months, or they, every three, six months, they'll do it twice a year. Okay. Lastly is a fire certificate inspection permit. So many fire trucks, that, uh, fire truck, any food truck that actually operate with uh, genera uh, any type of, of gasoline or propane generators, they want to make sure that all the equipment on the vehicle itself is functioning properly, the generators are hooked up properly, Electrical work, if it's put together, it needs to get signed off on as well. So the food truck inspection by the fire department is something that's really, really crucial because you don't want anything to happen with any of those gas lines or propane lines or even electrical uh, work that's done inside the unit. Now, next up, to get a food truck route in Texas, you also need to get a POS system. So you need a point of sale system. These are going to be the little processors that are going to be that unit that sits on the open window of your food truck. And then that's where the, the credit cards, debit cards, all that stuff goes through. And that is going to be a system you need to put into your vehicle and you need to apply for the actual um, software. So you can go online, you can make sure you can check all your daily activity. But the point of sale system will allow you to take credit cards and debit cards. Okay. Now, the other investment that you're going to need to make, and it's ultra important that this works, is, is you're going to invest some money in marketing. If you don't know how to market your food truck, but you want to do it online, Facebook is the best place, in my opinion, specifically for food truck marketing. Why? Because Facebook has specific uh, groups, Facebook groups that are dedicated to certain areas and counties and cities. And wherever you are in a certain city, if it, let's say it's L.A., there's a lot of great Facebook groups that are talking about local events, fairs, farmers markets, festivals, or different concerts, whatever it may be. But when you begin to associate your food truck with those different groups, you can be aware of what's going on in the community so you could show up with your food truck and make money, bottom line. And if you get an actual create, you need to create your own page on Facebook for your food truck, and you need to develop kind of a good rapport, a good relationship with the local residents and people within your community because they're always, if they love your food, they're going to follow you always back and forth. Also on your Facebook page, you can post things like your menu items, if you're changing new items, if you're going to be at a special event, if you're fundraising, if you're doing catering, 
There's some really great ways to market your food truck with social media. And if you can't do it, you can definitely even hire a local social media marketing group or even someone online to do it for you. But that is something you need to budget for as well. And also, we're going to do a really quick rundown too of food truck insurance. So these are the different types of policies for food trucks. And of course, I am not an insurance salesman, not trying to sell you insurance, but I'm just giving you some understanding of what you might need for your actual uh, food truck. So general liability, this actually protection of uh, bodily injury or even property damage to others that your food truck potentially could have. Next up, you might also need to get into workers' compensation. Workers' compensation insurance, obviously, is for your employees. It's basically to protect them if they happen to get injured in the course of their employment or the day of the work that they work with you. And you also need to have, of course, insurance on the food truck. So you want to cover your food truck and all of the attached equipment. This would be from any type of vandalism, collision, theft, or even natural occurrences of weather or even flooding. This is a good reason to have that type of insurance. Next up, you might also look into content insurance. So coverage for loose items. This could be also things within the truck that would be due to also collisions that may happen. Uh, also natural weather occurrences. If there's a fire that breaks out on the food truck, the contents of the food truck need to be protected as well. And also auto insurance. This would be liability protection while you're actually driving the food truck over potential accidents that could happen while you're in driving. Or like we mentioned before, one of your employees is driving your food truck. You need to make sure they have auto insurance to protect you. So this is a great, great rundown, a good foundation to understand what is needed in order for you to get a food truck started in the state of Texas. Remember, your city and county that's the offices that you need to double check on. Uh, make sure you find specific permits. In some cases too, guys, you also may need a permit for parking. So if you're going to park your food truck someplace, you may need to also get that as well. So check within your city or county in the state of Texas. So if you have any questions about starting a food truck business and you live in Texas, or if you've actually started your food truck, give us some advice. Let us know down below. Give us some comments and feedback on how you got started. And I'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks for watching Food Truck Freaks. If you are interested in creating your own food truck and you're trying to figure out how to do that, be sure to check out these additional resources and our website. Check out the links in the description for more information on how to create a food truck business, successful food truck business that is, and we'll see you guys on our next video.